You know, when, we, when the team uh, got to Apple a little over a year ago, the first thing we did was we called Adobe, called Macromedia, and called Quark. And um, what we asked them was, A, what do you think we should do? Because we'd been out of the Mac market for a while. And most importantly, what do we need to do to get these companies working together again? Because we love the design and publishing market. I mean, I hope you can tell from the graphics and the advertising and everything else we do, we love the design and publishing market. And Apple has not, had not been paying enough attention to its developers, its customers, and partners in general. And we've put a lot of energy into that. And I hope it's showing them we're always interested in hearing things that we're not doing well enough. So let us know. Um, you know, our email addresses are out there, and, uh, and send us an email, and we do jump on these things. So, fall of 1999, Mac OS X, I think when we meet again, hopefully a year from now, we'll be within six months of having Mac OS X out there in the market in a big way. So we do have a very clear strategy, going from Mac OS 8 and 8.1 to, in a few months, Mac OS 8.5. We think it's going to be a must-have upgrade. And then, over the next year to 18 months, especially in the design and publishing market, starting to get everybody moved up on OS 10, the apps are going to be there. The operating system is going to be hot. And we are investing tons into the Mac OS. So these are the topics we've covered today. And I've got a bonus topic. <laughs> um, the first person I actually called when I got back to Apple was, was my old friend John Warnick, who runs Adobe. And I said, John, tell me about all the craziness of working with Apple and how can we sort this out. And we began a dialogue about how Apple could work better with its developers that turned out to be very fruitful. And Adobe, I think, represented many developers in that it wasn't getting what it wanted out of Apple and was starting to de-invest. And I, I'm very pleased to say that with Adobe and all of our developers, we've really turned that around in the last year. And an example of that was, is something we're going to show you here today. Uh, we got a phone call from Adobe a few weeks ago that said, hey, we're working on a new technology for a new paradigm of page layout applications that we're going to bring to market in the future. And we would like to demonstrate this at Seabold. And it runs on top of Carbon. And we'd like to demonstrate it on top of Mac OS 8.5. And we will be obviously bringing it to Mac OS 10. And so we're going to give you today a sneak preview of some very cool technology. It's codenamed K2. And it's going to be a totally new page layout tool. It's going to run on Mac OS 8.5 and Mac OS 10. And it is going to, it's really great at supporting all of the Apple technologies that we've seen here today. So it's my pleasure to uh, introduce you to Ben. And I've forgotten Ben's last name. But Ben is the product manager for this product from Adobe. And Ben is going to give us a quick demo of this new K2 technology. Ben, welcome. Good morning. What I'd like to do today is give you a brief overview, a brief glimpse of this new Adobe publishing technology that we've created. Um, this technology is going to be running under the Carbon APIs, which ensures compatibility with not only Mac OS 8.5, but Mac OS 10 as well. So let me go ahead and start. I should also say by way of background that um, there are over 1,300 features in this highly extensible environment. And I'm going to literally just skim the surface on those features. So um, you'll notice the first thing inside of our open dialog, um, we get a preview thanks to the Carbon APIs, which has saved us a considerable amount of time. So when I open up this document, uh, this magazine spread, um, what I see here is um, actually a highly extensible page. Let me go ahead and go back and create a new layer. And I'm going to hide this existing layer, which removes the guides and all the objects from that one page as well. Go ahead and draw a box here. You'll notice that in a number of cases, we have um, bent the, the paradigms for what we can do with graphics um, as we're manipulating them. If 
I go to the place dialog and I import a graphic into this, this shape, notice that I have access to that graphic being able to move it around. And at the moment that I want to go through some sort of transformation of this graphic, um, I'm not into this abstraction that computer applications have put us in in the past, um, but I can directly manipulate that graphic or do so using one of the nine proxy points down in the transform palette. Let me go ahead and move this down and create a little bit of text here. And I'll apply a style sheet to this text. Just zoom that out to size. And let's take this text, select it, and then I will create an outline. I should also mention to you that um, I do not have ATM running on this machine. So let me go over to the swatches panel. I'll modify the color on that. Go ahead and take this existing graphic that I had before, cut that graphic out, and then paste it down into this 304 shape. Now you notice that though I've gone through that action, I still have access to the original graphic back behind it. Um, if I decide that I want to transform this other graphic that I've drawn, I can transform that frame. And of course, I can take the outline that I've created, and I can edit that outline as well. So let me go ahead and move this back up to the upper left-hand corner. And we'll turn that other layer back on briefly, just to check our overall layout. Turn that back off. Now let me go ahead and create a new text frame. So we'll start with one of the basic, basic elements for the Marie Curie fans in the audience and grow this radon out. And then let me go ahead and open up the color palette over here, pull this out, pull up the gradient palette, and we'll create a quick gradient for that text. Now I have the capabilities of creating a separate stroke and fill for that, that um, gradient text. And I also have the ability to go in and edit that text after I've gone through those actions. So let me go ahead and pull this down here, and let's bring in some text. You notice I don't have to have a text frame um, created before bringing text in. I can simply create them on the fly. And we have a lot of flexibility for extending text frames. So if I decide that I want text to roll from here over to here, I can easily link that text back up. So at this stage, let's go ahead and select all of this. And I'll apply a slight um, rotation to all that. And then if you've seen the wonders of display PostScript, but think of this world as display PDF, because we're certainly leveraging Adobe's PDF technologies, I have the abilities for being able to come in and do very free transformations on that. In addition to that, I uh, also have a shear tool where I can shear that text out. So I can get nice effects of anamorphic scaling. The other capability that we have is multiple views. So if I'm on page one and I want to see how my text is copy fitting on page 20, I can do that. If I'm zoomed up at 400% size and I want to see how my text is um, looking as I'm kerning it, I can do that as well. So going here to the familiar navigator panel, which is right out of our beloved friend Photoshop or Illustrator, I can zoom all the way up to 4,000%. The internal precision of the application is 1 1 millionth of a point. So when holographic publishing finally takes off, we'll be there. <laughs> so let me go ahead and pull this back down. And you'll notice that even, I've, even though I've gone through that action, that text in this view is still editable text and eminently printable through the wonders of PDF. So that's a brief overview. Thank you. Steve? Thank you, Ben. And thank you, Adobe. We look forward to seeing this app, hopefully, on the market sometime soon. Uh, you saw it here first, and you saw it here first on Macintosh. <laughs> so.
this is what we had today, and I really want to thank you for letting us come and, and talk. Uh, what a difference a year makes. I think we have a lot of momentum going forward, and we're here to make the best computers and the best operating systems in the world, so please let us know the problems you're having, and we'll really try to address them in our future products. Thank you very much.